being in the present means putting all your devices down because you miss all the tiny little beautiful things that happen in life if you're not in the present and that's the sad thing when people get in that mind state of negativity or negative routine or to the smallest thing to the biggest thing that puts more damage that you have to deal with because you're missing your life as Freddie Mercury would say who wants to live forever <laughs> you never know when it's your time you, you have no control over how long you get to keep your kids your parents nothing you have no right over it so be in the present then you don't miss your life I really want that for people I tell everybody this starts with self-reflection and if you're not willing to do that then this isn't gonna work for you who are you what are you if you haven't gone on this journey yet you start with where you are right now what do you like about yourself what do you like about your situation what don't you like what do you need to change to get out of that situation i understand some situations aren't as easily gotten out of as others but if you keep putting it out to the universe, tell me how to get out of the situation and you start listening. That's why I tell people to meditate, at least get the practice of 10 minutes a day, keep adding on so that you could listen and everything that comes into your brain, all of this clutter of the world and the thoughts, you have to push that down through every cell, every muscle, every bone, every part of your body. Your energy is running your whole system. You can't keep it here. You have to face whatever's there first and then push it down. People need to understand you have your alert mind, your present mind. You have your subconscious mind and you have your unalert mind. Referring to people that haven't activated that yet. Weirdos like me. I, I've activated that. We do. We've gone there. But your subconscious mind you have to deal with first. Because it has an automatic self-preservation mode and shoves things back to your subconscious. That's why a lot of severe trauma victims can't remember things until years later. Because it's all been packed back there because they weren't ready and their energy wasn't ready to face it. If you have a lot of stuff packed in there, you just have to tell the universe one thing at a time. Help me face it. Help me clear it. Make sure you feel safe and put that energy bubble around you that we've talked about before, that love energy bubble, and go there and face it because if you don't, you're never going to change your life. If you never change your life and you're sitting in that negative place where I hate my job, I'm not happy in my marriage, if you just let yourself stay there or just keep repeating them and get into another crappy marriage, your vibrations alone bring the vibrations of the earth down. That's why I'm on a mission to help people clear and ascend one person at a time if I have to. Because just that one person affects the entire consciousness of the world. Think about all the other negative things going on. You put in all the happy vibes and the people that are care of themselves. But right now, and it's getting ready to shift. It's getting ready to shift big time. So if people have been feeling weird, there's all kinds of things that have been going on. But there's too much negative right now. The tilt of the earth. This is part of the Merlin legacy. Think of it as the sword going through the, or the earth. It's tilted too much in the negative, And it's starting to go back to this. Keep in mind the earth is healing herself as the earth tilts and moves and does different things. It goes through different phases. So you're still going to be seeing natural disasters and the increasing amount of them and viruses. And honestly, you can't complain because we did this to ourselves. We could have had free renewable energy this entire time. Greed took over. They had to have their greed and they're still not stopping it. That's terrible and it's scary. I don't go off on it like apocalypse, but people need to understand you're going to lose your home. You're going to have floods. You're going to have landslides. You're going to have new viruses. There's going to be less land because the, pol the ice caps are melting. We did this to ourselves. The collective conscious of the earth is literally a living organism functioning with us. So collective conscious, 
is a massive thing, but also very simple at the same time. That makes sense. Yeah. I was thinking the first thing you said, you said a lot of things. I, I about... know. I put off on a little <laughs> That's all right. box there. No, it's fine. One of the first things you said was you were talking about self-reflection. And this is highly important to talk yes. about because you can't find your own self-love if you don't ever self-reflect and say exactly yeah i was a shitty person right there yeah that crappy thing happened to me like not everybody's perfect and everybody does horrible things or hurts people that you don't even understand that you hurt or the trauma that other people put people through it's all humans doing this to humans that's the sad thing that is like tragedy of it I was texting my other friend that's like me. You know, I'm a Gen Xer, but I totally get freedom because I've walked my own path my my whole life. So I understand the millennials and the next generations of the next generation. They want their own individuality. They want to be themselves. They're reinforcing that all the time. But on social media, all is them ripping the crap out of each other. You can't have it both ways. You just can't. You either want everybody to accept you how you are, and that's the way it is for everybody. And why is this group of people bullying each other so much? You can't have it both ways. That's very true. Self-reflection is a powerful tool. When you examine your thoughts, emotions, actions, and experiences, you gain a much deeper self-awareness and understanding. This introspective process allows you to evaluate your life, recognize patterns, and make conscious choices that align with your values and goals. In terms of understanding self-reflection, there's a deliberate process to that. It's the process of deliberately thinking about your thoughts, feelings, behaviors, yeah. and experiences. But we don't take the time because it needs time to look inward, to assess your actions and understand yeah. the motivations behind them. The primary purpose of self-reflection is to gain insight into your psyche which yeah. it can lead to personal growth and improved decision-making yeah. and better emotional yeah. regulation. It yeah. helps you understand why you act the way you do and how yeah. you can change or improve those behaviors. There yeah. are many benefits to it. Yeah. If you increase your awareness by reflecting on your experiences, yeah. you become much more aware of your strengths, your weaknesses, your values, your beliefs. And that awareness is crucial for personal growth and development and emotional intelligence. Because again, if you understand your emotions and the impact they have on your behavior, that can lead to better emotional regulation and healthier relationships. Within that, you would have enhanced decision making because when you regularly reflect on your past decisions and their outcomes, we can learn from your mistakes and your successes and make necessary adjustments and alignment because yeah. that leads to more informed, intelligent and thoughtful future choices. So you can identify areas of your life that need improvement. So you're not ripping yeah. the crap out of each other. You can set goals for your personal development, the encouragement by facilitating and taking the time for self-reflection allows you to adopt a growth mindset, see challenges as opportunities to learn, align, and grow. When I reflect on my thoughts and emotions, that can help me process difficult experiences or challenging experiences and reduce stress because it allows me to take a step back gain perspective and find solutions to whatever challenges there are. As to healing, the more like, you clear out, the more you can physically heal yourself. It's like that adage of the cancer patient. If you're like, I've got cancer, I'm going to die and go into depression, or you could choose to fight. No, I'm going to survive this. There's a total difference because I've worked in healthcare. You could feel those different mindsets on people if you just sit there and i've got cancer and yeah and i understand if you're really old and you're like i'm not going through chemo i'm saying if you're young enough you have to still have a good mindset to help your energy help heal you 
people don't understand that as much as they should. I have inflammatory responses to stress too, but when I get really stressed or really in pain, I yell too much, I'm aggravated too much, it affects my animals. And then I have to clear myself in my house and calm them down. That is a bad behavior of mine that I'm aware of. I need to change immediately. Mom's death and whatever, like we're over here. So I have to break that habit. I have to trust that things are going to be okay. That's control. You want control. And that's what starts to give you anxiety and stress instead of focusing on the things you cannot control, be in the present because you'll miss your life if you don't stay in the present. What can I do about anything right now? If I can't do anything about it, it's out of my control. There's no reason to focus on it and be in the present. Being in the present means putting all your devices down because you miss all the tiny little beautiful things that happen in life if you're not in the present. And that's the sad thing when people get in that mind state of negativity or negative routine or to the smallest thing to the biggest thing is that puts more damage that you have to deal with because you're missing your life as Freddie Mercury would say who wants to live forever <laughs> you never know when it's your time you, you have no control over how long you get to keep your kids your parents nothing you have no right over it so be in the present then you don't miss your life I really want that for people if you ask yourself, what did I learn from this experience? So you're talking about the behaviors you need to change. What did you learn from that experience? How did I feel during this situation? What could I have done differently? This can prompt a deep reflection and understanding yeah. about your personality, your strength inventories. It's a self-assessment that can provide insights into your characteristics and behaviors, which offers a starting point for deeper reflection. This is one of the challenges of self-reflection and probably why people don't do it is you have to face uncomfortable truths. Self-reflection can bring up uncomfortable emotions or truths about yeah. yourself. It requires courage yeah. and honesty to confront these aspects of your personality or past actions. There's a fine line between healthy yeah. self-reflection and overthinking. Yeah. You may become overcritical of yourself or you worry excessively about past decisions. It can be challenging to see yourself objectively because biases and blind spots cloud your judgment and make it difficult to gain an accurate understanding of your behaviors and emotions. You have to humanize it into application in daily life with a routine practice. That could be through journaling, morning meditation, or a weekly review. One of the things is I set intentions. I start the day by setting those intentions and I end it by reflecting on how well did my behaviors align with those intentions? What does that do? It keeps you focused on your, I don't like the word goals, I prefer the word promises. It keeps you focused on your promises and awareness of your actions throughout the day. Even if you have to engage in discussions with a trusted friend or hire a mentor who can provide you with feedback and help you see different perspectives, because yeah. talking through your thoughts can lead to deeper insight. Yeah. There has to be a review of the promises that you make, both short term and long term, and reflect on the progress you've made towards achieving yeah. them. Adjust them when they need to be okay, adjusted. Yeah. What's worked? What hasn't yeah. worked? What changes... Yeah you need to make if you really are after personal growth and personal development self-reflection is important it helps you understand your true values the yeah. promises you make or break and the habits that support your well-being if we look at a professional context self-reflection can lead to better performance career satisfaction when yeah. you reflect on your work experiences and the challenges you can develop new skills you can improve relationships this is where we have to invite connection this is where yeah. the mindfulness comes in like yeah. you said earlier it's the practice of being present and fully engaged in the moment that is closely yeah. linked to self-reflection if you're mindful you're more attuned to your thoughts and feelings yeah. which facilitate deeper reflection 
If yeah. you combine mindfulness with reflection, that can enhance the quality of your insights. By staying present and non-judgmental during reflection, you can observe your thoughts more clearly and gain a much more balanced perspective. I think it's a vital tool for personal, professional and spiritual growth. Nobody wakes up that day and says, I want to live a shitty life. Nobody does that. You have to fight through those things. It doesn't matter how good you think somebody else's life is for whatever reason. They've got money. They've got whatever. They go through traumatic things too, just like everybody else. As an entire world, we're connected by the internet, which is an amazing thing on one hand, which is a horrible thing on the other hand, because people are not in the present. I rarely comment on somebody else's post because every time I do, it turns into this battle of words, even if I said something good. I don't have time for this. You need to start understanding other people's cultures and talk to them. You're connected to the entire world. I talked to somebody from Israel, just showed up as a follower. I know the history between Palestine and Israel and the U.S. involvement and the nastiness. So it's a lot deeper than people think. I was asking him because they all have to join the military. That's part of living in Israel. How does that affect your life? Every day you go outside, do your thing, grab something to eat at the local place, and the next thing everybody's blown up. It's like South Central LA area or up in Oakland, wherever gangs are very active you're doing that to yourself and you should be helping each other instead of blowing each other up. But it's the same thing. Those kids and those people that live in that kind of environment are full of PTSD and can hardly function, especially the younger they're exposed to it. It's just another collective conscious stop and think just because you can go and bomb somebody, should you? Just because you can tell somebody off because they've made you mad, should you? Is it really worth it? Because that just puts negative energy back in your space. It can be the littlest thing to the biggest thing, but it affects the entire world and how we feel. And it's such a massive concept to think about, especially for any normal person that doesn't talk the way I talk. <laughs> but what the heck am I going to do? Each person is literally everything. You need to be in a positive space because you are a something. Everybody is a something, a big something. I don't like when people put themselves in that negative space because it affects your life, your health, your energy, what you could do in your life, and how we feel. It's massive. The machinery doesn't allow you to self-reflect. It does allow you to make conscious choices and develop healthier relationships if you want to lead a more fulfilling life. And if you're in a war zone or if you are dictated to where you've got old men who send young men and women to fight other young men and women, then you, it, it's very difficult to make a conscious choice. When they drafted and killed millions of Americans for no reason in Vietnam, you do make the decision if you want to join the military. I'm, I'm, in the context of Israel, you have to do that. The machinery is not set up for you to take that step back. It's important to balance self-reflection with action and approach of the mindset of growth and compassion towards yourself. If you yeah. are in that situation where there is a compulsion or a dictate for you to join the army, then it's challenging to create that environment. You're already living in a war zone, whether you join well, the military yeah, or not. But, you're, but you don't know if a rocket's going to come over. So their surveillance, their energy fields become extremely contracted and compressed. Yes. Their aura, their life force, their biofield energy the aura goes into reformation and collapse every seven yeah. seconds. That's why yeah. if you have a thought now, in seven seconds, you'll have a different thought. Yes. This energy that's moving all the time. We think yeah. things are fixed in place. No. If you look at it. Time the... is not like this. It's not linear. It flows. Yeah. Past, present, and future all together, all at once. The aura is your subtle energy field. 
yeah. that surrounds your physical body and it has a multicolored glow that can extend several feet from the body. It's got multiple yeah. layers and they correspond to different aspects of each person, such as the physical, yeah. mental, emotional, and spiritual. Well, it's your states. chakras. It's your it's chakras, your chakras. Exactly. That's why I take people through quantum meditation. And yes, I can do it online. One, starting with clearing your chakras and feeling your chakras, then your root chakra is what you need to be pushing all the negative out of into the earth, like out of your feet. Then we go back up and connect them all like the sword. And your crown chakra is your resonator. Think of it as the happier you are and the more you're resonating. That is the goal of quantum meditation and fixing you. And if we have to add in a reading so they can dig into what's going on in their mind, then we'll go to that step. Most people that come to quantum meditation, they're already in this self-reflective mode and you have to get adjusted because one, you're clearing things, but two, you're getting information downloads that your energy needs to comprehend because it's healing and adjusting. That's why we go both ways and during quantum meditation, you're finally open and you're vibrating again through your crown mm. chakra. It's yeah. interesting because there are natural laws and spiritual laws that correspond to the chakras or centers. These energies within the body associated with specific emotional and spiritual functions originate from ancient Indian traditions. Those seven major chakras along the spine, like you explained, from the base root chakra to the crown, govern different aspects of life yeah. and health. Whatever negative you're going through affects different chakras yeah. in different ways. When I'm going through sessions even online with quantum meditation i'm focusing on their body because i could read everything remotely if your sacrum is blocked because of whatever negativity it's your creativity and your imagination everybody's got a creative side even if you build a birdhouse for your backyard that's creativity i feel pain in my heart chakra and solar plexus i, I have to do this quantum meditation all the time I'm still recovering from hives. I've been healing myself. They've gone off my face, but I'm still scratching my arms. I did that to myself because I let myself get too upset over a situation. So I have to go through this too. Any kind of healer, no matter what form it's in, other than massage, but massage can be meditative and take you places too but they look at us like we've already got all the answers in our lives i have to heal myself every day if i get a download of information from universal beings i have to ask them to come in dudes you overloaded me i'm having a meltdown here get in here and help me it's an everyday thing and that's why i say people need to meditate every day because of how busy and noisy the world is just taking those 10 minutes for yourself if you can do no more than 10 minutes, that is so valuable. All of this will still be there in 10 minutes. So just take 10 minutes and get it out of your mind. It takes practice because the thoughts keep coming in. Even with Buddhist monks, when they start out, they're the best meditators. They work their way up to that level where you get in the fourth and fifth dimension, which is awesome. And then you don't want to come back down to earth. <laughs> but yeah, just 10 minutes a day. If meditation isn't your thing, listen to some music and sit there. Can you draw? Do you like to journal? Do you like to go out and sit in the park and just listen to the animals? Anything that relaxes you, that takes those thoughts out of your head is meditative. There are other things people can do to affect their biofield. There are therapies like therapeutic touch or massage, Kong, Reiki. And acupuncture. Those practices help to facilitate the biofield and promote healing and balance within the body. These therapies are thousands of years old. When I was heavily involved in Aikido, that chi, that the central concept in traditional Chinese medicine and martial arts, 
refers to that vital life force that flows through all living things. It's yes. it's the energy that sustained life. Even in acupuncture, yeah. the meridians in traditional Chinese medicine, or like freeways in the body that flow through pathways that are called meridians. But if you have a blockage yeah. or an imbalance in those meridians, that will lead to illness or discomfort. Acupuncture, yeah. Tai Chi, Qi Kong, these are all practices to design to balance and enhance the flow of Qi in the body. What's problematic is there are many energy vampires. Unbeknownst to many people, their energy is being drained, leaving them feeling depleted or emotionally exhausted. This emphasizes the impact of negative interactions on um, one's energy levels. Practices like grounding, shielding, and energy cleansing are recommended to protect oneself from energy vampires. Meditation yeah. is important. Visualizing that protective barrier around your energy field. Some people use crystals. Yeah. Some people perform ceremonies to cleanse their energy. A really good friend that I, I can't stand anything hot. So he keeps inviting me to these things. He does a lot of sweat lodges. Sometimes natives come. Sometimes it's just him and his group. So that's a meditative clearing thing. There's a ton of stuff you can do to clear your energy. Just listening to different frequencies is like an instant negative clearer for me. If it's at 432 hertz, that frequency, and there's a really deep, oh, get really deep. That one's when I'm going in myself and adjusting everything or looking at everything and what's going on in there. I never stop doing that. This collective consciousness and your thoughts towards other people too, the prison system. I know it's different in America from where you live or other people live, but one, it's set up to fail. Two, there's actual laws written that make sure that brown and black people are locked up in mass. It's even in the 13th Amendment so that black people can vote. Nobody else's amendment to vote is written like that, not even when women got the right to vote. It's set up to fail. I'm not saying that people that are killed a bunch of people should have second chances to get out of prison. That's not what I'm saying. But if you're a 17-year-old kid shot and killed someone when you were 17, you're already in a bad situation. The family of the person that died, hopefully they can get to the place where they forgive you because that only hurts them, but they don't ever want you to come out of prison. The prison system doesn't want you to come out of prison. Everybody needs to take a step back here. I'm not saying everybody should be released from prison, but everybody deserves second chances, even if it's something very tragic like that. Uh, Changing your mindset. There's tons of things that I did as a teenager that could have left me or my friends dead. I just got lucky that it didn't. We need to start changing our mindsets about things. Don't just punish that person forever. Sorry if anybody's Catholic. It's that old Catholic thing from way back when the Catholics ruled the world. May your soul burn in hell. Why would you say that to somebody? Why? That is a horrible thing to say to somebody. Everybody needs a screw-up allowance in life. Yeah, that's what I mean. Everybody deserves second chances and chances to make things right. If they're not willing to make them right, that's their choice. I don't think people should rot away in prison for the rest of their life and be on death row for something they did as a teenager. The lowest of drug offenses can put a person of color in this country when just having a bag of your own smoke could have put you in prison for the rest of your life if you were a black or brown person. That kind of anger adds to this collective conscious. That's why I'm saying people are afraid to look behind the curtain and what would that be like? If we let this kid out that made a horrible mistake when he was a kid, what would that look like? There are universal beings and they are interacting with us and they are here and they don't want to pull the curtain back and be like, who are you? What have you done? And what can we fix? The system is set up so you are disconnected. You don't connect to the divine or to the sacred. You don't start to wonder and have an awe yeah. in a prison. When you're looking at those walls in that small space, 
most of the time you are replaying the guilt and the shame or the remorse. Yeah. You're not open to any other kind of connection. It, you go to prison so you can get rehabilitated, even if it's a life sentence or death sentence. It's a very violent environment and the guards are in on it too. They treat you like you're inhuman. How are you going to rehabilitate people in mm. that kind of environment? Let's create a happy safe environment for these people with therapy. That's why I was saying they're set up to fail. Designed for profit. And many people in life got one foot on the gas, which represents their good intentions, but the other foot slammed on the brake, embodying actions that oppose those intentions. That internal yeah. conflict is exhausting because it yeah. leaves you revving your engines, but getting nowhere. Unless you're brave enough to admit that you're circling the drain in some yeah. aspect of your life, it's time to pull down the kabuki screen and reveal the stagnant gunk that holds you back. You go into prison and you get a criminal degree because you learn more about criminality in prison than you probably do yeah. on the outside. Shadow work isn't dumb because shadow work's yeah. not about offering sweet swills of snake oil. You yeah. have to be able to embrace effective and life-changing psychological medicine. That the people work... that reflect in prison, you can very much tell their attitudes versus other people's attitudes. Yeah. Even though they're stuck in there for life, they still feel what they did every day. They hardly ever get visitors. It's just the way it is. If you go into doing this work, there is an evolving tension between the drive to self-protect and the drive to self-transform. It's yeah. a whole dance between defense and possibility. Yeah. Yeah, I go by a common sense mind frame always. So I'm applying the same things to gangs and those neighborhoods as this violence culture in prison because it's also a very gang thing. You have to get people to protect you. There's more people in gangs in that culture than in law enforcement. Why are you not helping each other and being bigger than what that system is telling you have to be? Why are you not taking all that drug money and making resources for your people like the Black Panthers did back in the 60s? They might have been armed and scared the hell out of J. Edgar Hoover, but they were also feeding their communities. They were taking care of their communities. Why aren't you taking that drug money and making your communities better instead of shooting the crap out of each other? You could all be investing in things and making your community better. And you can still make money that way. You would be a legitimate business person. And it's the same thing in prison. Group to be with, otherwise you're going to get your ass kicked and slaughtered every day. Support each other and be better than what they tell you. They tell you your number or they call you by your last name and shine flashlights in your face when you're asleep. Get together as a group and say, no more. We're going to be happy together. And we're going to fight this negative that you're producing in this place be like a community that helps each other and they can do that on their own. People need to realize even in the worst place that you could be, you could still unite yourself together in a good way to help each other. People need to understand that. Even if it's your own problems or you're in a group of people in a bad place, you could take charge and say, this ain't going to go down like this. We're not fighting each other anymore. It's just like me. I'm not going to get up and be angry and frustrated over this. I had to literally release my control to the universe, which is what I'm recovering from right now. I always have to self-check and be like, okay, I am not doing this the way that they want me to. I'm stubborn. They've had to kick my butt twice in life now to get me to listen. The first one was my mom really was going because she was bad for a long time. And I was focusing on getting clients, getting my business, but taking care of her too, of course, because I had lived in the same house with her. I could do those things and still be there for her and help her. But that's where my mind was focused. They literally knocked me out. I lost all sensation of everything, every thought, and my head just went like this. They were like, wake up, she's starting to go. Let it go with all of this good getting clients stuff. This is the second time they've had to pretty much kick my butt to get me to understand that the universe is going to take care of me. I need to start thinking different. 
So I had to go through it again. It'll never stop. What's your attitude about it? Are you going to be mad about it? Or are you going to be like, okay, let's get this rolling. Let's get this change happening. Let's move on from whatever it was and form groups of people with love and caring around you. Otherwise, you're going to keep getting slapped by a cosmic two by four. Part of this from prisons to people to places in the world where our school curriculum, is it actually teaching us anything about life? Is it really no. preparing us for life? If I, I had think- kids, they would be homeschooled. They would yeah. not go into public education. Truly providing a well-rounded learning and alignment experience that prepares individuals for the real world. In our school curriculum, is it teaching us anything about life? Reflect on your school experience. What did you truly learn? I learned to write and all of those things. But until I got to college, then you get into those classes where it's debate and thinking and what's your opinion. You learn about different theologians. Once you get out of high school, it changes unless you're one of those religious people that have to go to the religious college. So your mind never gets taken anywhere else. That's totally different. (laughs) My point here is that if you want to know anything, you've got to first know yourself. If you want to live in harmony with nature and rise into a sphere where the senses cease to trouble you, you have to live in communion with the cosmic power from which all things proceed. There's a cheerful obedience to the eternal destiny with the will of the universe, because that is part of divine law. The wise person accepts their life as the first and highest calling. It's a duty, a task which reason imposes upon you. Can you be a teacher of the conduct of life and inner alignment and inner potency? Can you have an open mind and a tractable heart? That needs an attentive and devout spirit distinct from a curious intellect. A curriculum is designed for you to fulfill a societal economic imperative. A true education allows you to rise in moral elevation to the level of one's maxims and and precepts and wisdom. That consists in knowing how to distinguish what is your own and what is not. I, I, I see a true education as something whereby you are embracing a living wisdom. I'm not saying reading, writing, arithmetic, science, mathematics, and English are not important subjects. Of course they are. Yeah, I have multiple college degrees. I would always be in college if it wasn't so expensive because I love learning. But on the other side of that, I learn something, even if it's a series that I'm watching or music I'm listening to. I'm constantly looking things up about the real history of things. I peel behind the curtain. I want to know the real history of things. I'm always learning that way, but I'm learning on this ascension journey too. I'm always getting more information there. I'm a total history nerd, but it also helps me in my work because I know the true history and I can hone in on a lot of things that were people's past lives because I know them and I've studied them because I want to. I want to know about ancient cultures and current cultures. I look at real people's lives, even if it's some random documentary that somebody made on YouTube. Let's watch that. I never stop asking why, no matter if it's on an earthly level or up in the universe. I I look at future potencies that are very different to ancient ones because it's a new time. If you journey through the ages of education from the ancient whispers of Egypt that the house of life, the sacred art of hieroglyphics, and you go to Mesopotamia, where there were the tablet houses where cuneiform was mastered Mm -hmm. and education was the key to unlocking the secrets of the gods and the states. Even if you look at Eastern Enlightenment, you go to ancient India and you look at the vivid picture of the curricula. You go to China, the imperial examination system and Confucian principles. There's such an arrogance in modern academia to look at those things and dismiss them. Ancients were technologically running and it was 
free renewable energy. The whole world was connected. They knew how to use portals. That's why it's drawn and written about the same all over the world. You see the same images all over the world. They might look a little different because there's different artists, but you see what I'm saying. So they knew about all of that. And the ancient world was not some primitive system. You want to look at what they built, that alone right there says that was not a primitive system. You're making things that you can't even put a piece of paper in between the the rocks, the granite, whatever they made it from. Come on. That's like high level mathematics. They want to Sacred say well, they geometry. didn't have the tools. Yeah. But there are tools and you can make things. There was even a guy that made, it's called the Coral Castle. It's in Florida. He blocked this thing that he was using, but he built all of this by himself. Very heavy, huge pieces of stone and made this thing. What was under there was working with electromagnetic fields that can levitate things. They knew how to use the energies of the earth to harness them to move things and produce more energy. They knew about all of that stuff. You only have to look at the human body. It's an electromagnetic adaptive it's, organism. I say we're 90% tech, 10% bio. It's all connected. It's your thought process. And that's all part of collective consciousness. Yeah. Everybody can make your environment better. You better start doing it. If there's a lot more of you than them, then you better start making your stuff happy and make it better. I appreciate your perspectives on what we've spoken about. You've raised some fascinating points. As you say, it's interconnected. We're on this grand journey of awakening consciousness. I feel I'm confronted in the nicest possible family way with a rolling ball of enigma. I always feel I leave you with more to contemplate. Now we're going to get into this. And then you start thinking about it. So it's cool. We take things from the spark of existence, that yeah. primordial source where all that matter and energy arose from that yeah. spark. Fundamental laws and forces have shaped the cosmos, shaped our agency. There were sacred principles that came together with the ability for these simple elements to combine into complex structures and patterns yeah. over vast stretches of time. We're part of creation. It's incumbent upon us to play our participant part. We are the actors, the directors, the script writers, the set designers, the camera people. It's not, I'm just the director or I'm just the script writer. We're all of those things. Everybody, no matter how small and worthless you make yourself out to be, you are not. Everybody has huge energy and can do so much and do have a role to play in this earth. Every single person. I just want people to start loving themselves. It's very important. Where can people find you, Raven? Everything is Psychic Empath Raven Willow. That's my website, Psychic Empath Raven Willow. That's my Instagram. That's my TikTok, Facebook. So everything's the same name. People stole my other names. So Psychic Empath Raven Willow. And you can message me at any of those places. Even if you just have a question, if you want to set up a reading, use your own creative natural ability to quantum jump into a reality that you desire. Connect with an alternative version of yourself to connect with the life of your dreams. Raven, thank you so much once again. I look forward to the next dialogue. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I will see you next time. Oh.